PHP 7 now has some deprecated features. Now more than likely, if you're following best practices, these deprecated features won't really matter to you. But just to illustrate some of these features, let's first of all take a look at class constructors. In PHP 7, it no longer supports the old type class constructors. So I have a class here called my class, and then I have a function with the exact same name as the class name. This would be typically classed as a constructor, but this is the old way of doing things, and it has been for a while now. And PHP 7 is looking to deprecate this feature. What it wants you to do is keep to a very strict naming convention when it comes to your constructor functions by making sure your constructor function uses the underscore underscore construct naming convention for your constructor function. However, even though PHP 7 shouldn't work now with this old style constructor, it still will. So this object will be built. We're going to pass this string in to the create prop property that our constructor function is creating and then we're going to echo it out. And you can see here that it is still working, but please note it may stop working at any point in time. And you can see that I am running PHP version 7. But best practice would suggest not to do this and to use the underscore underscore construct naming convention. And it works exactly the same way. The next feature in PHP 7 that is looking to be removed but has not yet been removed is the ability to call non-static members in a static way. So for example, if you had a static method like so, so I could say static function and I called this method and it was just to echo out method run and end with a semicolon. What I can do is I don't even need to create the actual object or an instance of this class. All I need to do is target the class, my class, use the double colon, and then I can say, right, go and invoke the method called method. And if I hit refresh, you see it says method run. But you can also do this with non-static members like so. And you'll notice it again says method run. However, even though this is still allowed in PHP 7.0.4, it is looking to be a removed feature of the PHP engine. So please bear this in mind, and this is not good practice. The reason being is because instance level methods usually contain the this keyword, which needs context and therefore calling it statically is not a good idea. So please do note, you can still call static members this way. However, if it's not a static member, like so, then you shouldn't call it this way because this feature may be removed in the future. Now next up, I'd like to talk about the password hash function that we use to secure our passwords. So the first parameter is still required. It still requires you to provide a password for it to hash. And then once it's hashed and salted, you can go ahead and store that string in a database. Now the second parameter is again still required. And we provide a number, which is by a constant. You can provide a constant or a number. If I was to, let's say, echo out just the constant right here you will receive back a number, which is one. So you could say password default or one. Both mean exactly the same thing. And it will set it to the default encryption algorithm provided by the PHP engine. But note, this is subject to change over time as better encryption methods are added to the PHP engine. But for now, we'll just leave it as password default. So now what I'll do is I'll save this and I'll hit refresh. Notice what it did. It took the string, which is passwords, and that will be someone's password. And what it will do is it will use the default algorithm to encrypt it. So now what we can do is take that string and we can chuck it into the database. You should not be storing plain text passwords in your database. If some hacker was to get into your database, 
they shouldn't be able to identify the user's passwords in the database. It should be fully encrypted, so if a hacker was to hack into the database, they'd see this string associated with the user's password and this string associated with a user that resembles their password. And this is not very useful for a hacker at all. So what does this string actually represent? Well, you have a few dollar signs right here. Now the first dollar sign to the second dollar sign, this identifies the encryption algorithm that's used. Now I'm using the bycrypt algorithm. This is specified by PHP's default encryption, but you can choose other forms of encryption if you wish. So that's the identifier of the encryption. And this is the cost. So this was how much cost was it on the hardware to generate it? Now, the higher the number, the greater the algorithm, the more random it is. But please do note, this will actually increase the payload on the server. It will require the server to do a lot more thinking. And then after the dollar sign, you have a salt that is 22 characters long, however many characters that is. So the salt is generated automatically in PHP 7, and it was also automatically generated in older versions of PHP. But the difference is now, PHP 7 will not let you specify your own salt. The salt is there to add an extra layer of security on there. So in PHP 7, it's not going to let you write your own salt out. It's going to do that for you. And that's for your own security. And then after you have your salt, you will have your password. After the 22 character salt, you will have the password that's been encrypted. And then what you can do is you can use the password verify function to go ahead and verify the password like so. But that's out of the scope of this lecture for security. But do note that you can still pass in a third parameter. Now here is where you could have provided a salt of your own. But now in PHP 7, this isn't allowed. You cannot provide your own salt because this isn't random enough. Even this right here isn't random enough. You need special characters. You need all kinds of things. And it needs to be truly, truly random or as random as it can be. And unfortunately, even human beings aren't that random as computers can be. So this can now be totally omitted, totally got rid of because PHP 7 says those salts that come from human beings, they're not secure enough. So it does it automatically for you. So that's actually something less that you have to do. But you can provide a greater cost. So the cost at the moment is 10. Now, if I was to increase the cost to, let's say, 12, well, now that's going to make the page load slower. So if you notice now, when I refresh, that was quite a bit slower. If I was to change that to 16 and hit refresh, notice here it's gone a lot, lot slower. And that's because it's having to work a lot harder at payload 16 to generate a truly more secure salt and also going through the algorithm to make sure it's truly random. Please do note, don't set this number too high. 10 is actually perfectly fine. If you want to go a little bit higher, then go ahead and do that. But don't change this number by a lot because at the end of the day, you still have to have a working web server at the end of it. And waiting this long to verify a user account, just the password side of things, is not a good idea. So please do bear that in mind. But you can still provide the cost option, but you cannot no longer provide the salt option in PHP 7. Now, finally, I want to talk about the stream get metadata function. This function now only takes one parameter. And what this will do is whenever you, let's say, target a web page in your browser, what will happen is it will point to a file, hence the name FP right here, file pointer. And it's pointing to a file. And what that file will give back is header information. It will give all sorts of meta information. So metadata is just little piece of information about the file and the server and the connection and so forth. So what I can do is I can point to a file using fopen. And then what I can do is take a look at some metadata. So I can say stream get metadata. And I can take a look at the file that we're pointing to. I can get that metadata and then I can print it out. And if we were to go through HTTPS, 
Now the SSL protocol can still get the header information automatically through the same stream get metadata function. And if I save it, hit refresh, you'll notice that we get that information printed out in a nice JSON format, telling me the URI, telling me all sorts of information about the HTTP status, cache, all kinds of things. So that's actually really useful information. And again, this information can be retrieved now from the SSL connection without passing in any second parameter. It will just automatically look at the connection type whether it be HTTP or HTTPS, which is using SSL, and it will still fetch the metadata back. So there are a few deprecated features of PHP 7, and sometimes it's not you know, an entire function. Sometimes it's just a parameter of a function, a value that you give in. So hopefully none of those features are making you smack your forehead going, wow, you know, this is really a ton of changes right here. It's only a few minor details and a few minor changes that have taken place. And hopefully 99% of your code and most of the time 100% of your code will run in PHP 7. So we've got wonderful new features. It's now faster, more agile, and it's a wonderful programming language.